Hello friends, how is it going? It's me, Betty Jean. I am so excited. It is time for my monthly reading wrap up. Get ready with me. I read 11 books in the month of September and I am here to talk about them with you. Of course, as spoiler free as possible. I don't want to ruin the books. I just want to give you the basic vibe of the book, my thoughts on them, my rating, all that good stuff, how I felt about them. Uh, if it's in a series where I want to continue it, all that good stuff. I love this series. I love chatting about books. I love hearing your thoughts on these books specifically, but also what you're reading. I'm constantly writing down your recommendations. Um, so I'm just super excited to hear what you have to say. I'm also really excited to get into October. I have like a curated little pile in my little library of like spooky vibes and witchy vibes and stuff like that for October that I'm really excited to dive into. And I'm also gonna start doing a little bit of book shopping again next month because I'm going on a trip and I like to shop at indie bookstores. I'm also, I'm pretty sure meeting up with Allie Dawson sometime in October and we're gonna go to like some bookstores in Orlando as well. So I'm gonna need some recommendations. Not that I don't have any. I think I have like at least a hundred books on my like list of things that I wanna read that I don't own yet, um, but I'm always down for more. And of course we're gonna be doing our makeup together or I'll do it by myself <laughs> if you don't wanna do your makeup. But I'm gonna do my makeup, chat about books. I'm playing with the Secret Grove palette from Gourmet Girls with some of my singles from Ensley Rain. And I love how this look came out. So we're just gonna dive in. Um, before we do, this is just a basic choker. And these plugs are Love Kills Boutique. Also, this sweatshirt is so cute. It's like spooky bookish merch from the brand Book Babe Designs on Instagram. Unfortunately, this launch is no longer available, but if this like appeals to you, go follow her on Instagram because I'm sure she'll have more launches in the future. So I, I know I'm keeping my eye out. Without further ado, let's just hop in, chat about books, play with makeup, all the good stuff. All right, hello. I am so excited. I just always love filming these videos and recapping what I've read lately. Cause I like, you know, in the amount of books that I read in a month, I kind of forget a little bit about what I read. So it's fun for me to like, oh yeah, I did read that. It was so good. And like kind of revisiting these characters again, it's just, oh, it's gonna be so fun. So we're gonna do our makeup together. Well, as long as you're doing your makeup, otherwise I'm doing it by myself, but we're gonna hang out together. I'm gonna do my makeup. You're gonna do whatever you're doing. And I'm gonna chat about all 11 books that I read last month in the month of September. I did prime already before I did my brows. I used the Freck Rich Bitch and the Rare Beauty Illuminating Primer. So that's already sinking into the skin. Oh goodness, I forgot to wet my sponge though. I'll be back. I've returned. Um, I'm probably not gonna mention everything that I'm using because I'll be busy chatting, but just to start with, I'm using my Rare Beauty Skin Tint mixed with my Fenty Ease Droplet Glow Enhancer in the shade Pink Pearl. I'm just gonna make a little cocktail of that on the back of my hand and go to town while we chat about books and everything that I use in this video will be linked down below. All the books that I talked about will be linked down below. Um, any discount codes I have, things like that, you know the drill. So let's just dive into it. The first thing that I read in September was the second book in the Clockwork Angel series, or Infernal Devices, I suppose, but it's like the Clockwork by Cassandra Clare. <laughs> this is the Clockwork Prince. Um, this was the second of the trilogy and I really enjoyed it. I'd finished off August reading the first one and I just wanted to continue rolling in the series. So I went right into the second book. Obviously I don't wanna like give spoilers on the first book. So I'm gonna be fairly vague talking about these, but we're just continuing on Tessa's journey. First book kind of had to do with her getting introduced to the Shadow Hunters and getting to know them. Specifically like Will and Jem is like a big point of the first book just like kind of getting to know them more so then this book specifically is diving a little bit more just deeper into those relationships between her and Jem and her and Will and again I don't want to give spoilers or anything but I really really like this one I really liked getting to know Jem a bit more I feel like we got to know a lot more about him in this book and I just liked hearing his story this uh series is very much a like fantasy kind of vibe it takes place back back in the day, I don't remember exactly the, the time period, but it's like older time period, but it doesn't feel like super old to read it. It still feels modern enough, but it has good adventure. It has good characters. I like the different like kind of beings that they're kind of going after different demons. There's vampires. There's like all sorts of different characters going around. I thought it was a really, really fun series. And just this book specifically, I really liked because I liked getting to know Jem more. He's such a good character. Um, so yeah, enjoyed that one. All three books I gave overall a solid four stars. I thought they were 
a good series. It wasn't like so mind blowing that it gave me like that five star feeling or anything, but they were really good. I really enjoyed them. I feel like I read them pretty fast too. And they're pretty thick books. So that was the first thing that I dove into for the month of September. And then after that, I dove right into the third one of the series, the final of the trilogy, The Clockwork Princess. So in the first book, you know, like right from the beginning when Tessa gets captured, that the Magister is what he's known as, uh, wants to capture her for something. And that's kind of just remained a thing throughout this entire series. So there's just more political unrest going on with just the the way that this world works with like the shadows and the shadow hunters and the demons and all the things. And for some reason, the Magister just really wants Tessa for whatever reason. So that's a major point in this book. Again, we're just getting more relationship building between all the shadow hunters and Tessa included. We're learning more about what Tessa's capable of and what she can do. We're also getting a lot more backstory to Will, which we hadn't really had prior to this. So just a lot more unanswered questions. I feel like this was a good ending to the series, honestly, because it kind of closed everything up the way it needed to be. There were definitely some heavy emotional parts in this one, and it was just overall so good. Again, just the series as a whole, I gave a solid four stars to. I just think it was such a good mix of fantasy and adventure and mystery and world building. It was a really good series. This was my first time reading anything from Cassandra Clare, and I'm potentially interested in reading more. I know there's like a lot more that she's written, a lot more fantasy world. So if you've read anything else from her, let me know what you enjoyed and things like that. My best friend Mackenzie had actually gifted me the trilogy for my birthday, kind of sight unseen. I don't think she'd read it before and I hadn't even heard of it before. So that was a, that was a good pick. Thanks Mackenzie. As you'll see in an upcoming uh, complexion declutter that I've already filmed, I was re-inspired to actually use my high gloss finishing powders that I've hoarded and not used, but it's just because I haven't really been setting the perimeters of my face. So I'm just going to kind of target this on certain areas where I'm good with a little bit more of a highlighty vibe. I mean, I like a glowy look. I just don't want like this right under my under eyes, but I'm kind of okay with it kind of everywhere else. I'm just gonna lightly dust this kind of around the perimeters of my face because I hoarded so many of these as you'll, as you'll soon see. <laughs> Moving on, I don't have the physical copy because I actually listened to the audiobook. I checked it out through the Libby app through my local library, but it was Jeanette McCurdy's I'm Glad My Mom Died. I've been wanting to read this so bad. And I was specifically told to do the audiobook um, because she narrates it herself. And it was honestly a really good audiobook to listen to. And it wasn't terribly long. I think it was like six hours worth of content. Um, and some audiobooks are like pushing. 10, 15, 20, 30 hours, depending on the length of the books. This was a nice, easy to listen to audiobook in the sense that it was not overly long. So I appreciated that. Um, it was a heavy book though. It's basically like Jeanette's life story ever since she was like five or six years old, kind of getting dragged into the acting world by her mom and just all the stuff that she went through living under an abusive parent and dealing with childhood acting and the ins and outs of that and the stuff she had to go through. It delves into eating disorders and just all sorts of stuff. It's very heavy. Um, don't recommend reading or listening to if you're not in a good mental space. And I just, just know it going in. Very triggering book, especially if you're someone who has suffered with eating disorders or even an abusive parent. Um, it was a heavy book, but it was really, really good. I think she did a really good job writing it. And I really liked the way she wrote it because she wrote all the chapters like as if she was living them in the moment. So she was writing things and giving her reactions as she was in the moment, not really so much of a reflection like, oh, I probably shouldn't have acted this way or maybe this was an overreaction or maybe this, maybe that. It was very much like how she was feeling in that moment and it made it feel very real, very raw. Um, it was really good. It's funny like, the front of the book says like, oh, this was so funny and witty or whatever. And I'm like, I wouldn't really call this funny because it's not a funny story. It's kind of kind of heavy and sad. But the way she does write certain things is kind of witty and humorous, just the way she has her reactions and stuff. So it was a really well written book. I think it deserves all the praise that it gets. It was hard to rate this book because it's like, it's not like it was fictional, like it's literally her story. It feels wrong to rate it, but I did end up giving it just a solid five stars because it made me feel very immersed. It made me feel just all the feelings. <laughs> and I think it was written really well. And I'm excited to see if she ends up doing more in the future. I think I read that she is potentially going to start diving into like her author era since like acting is kind of 
something she's not into anymore. Um, very much so, and you'll find out if you read the book. Um, but yeah, it's it was really good, and I'd like to see her delve more into more writing, some fictional stuff. I'd like to see where her creative mind can go, because I think she has a really good way of writing her stories. I love this blush so much. This is the Kaleidos Joyride. Just like this burnt yellowy brown color. It's so pretty. And again, I honestly do recommend just listening to it as an audiobook. I didn't read it like in my hands at all, like not even a little bit. So I don't know how it reads. I'm sure it reads fine. Like I read most books in a physical form, um, but it was just a really, really good audiobook. And it makes me want to listen to more like memoirs and autobiographies and stuff like that in audiobook form. So if you have any specific recommendations on ones that you really enjoyed and think I might enjoy, um, lay them on me. Or even if it's like a fictional book, just lay on me like which books you feel like really thrived as an audiobook specifically. Cause I'd like to know. I like to listen to that kind of stuff when I'm driving or cleaning and stuff like that. And with the Libby app, you can check anything out you want for free, so it's great. Even eBooks, if you're someone who doesn't want audiobooks but you like to read like on a tablet or your phone, download the Libby app and just connect your library card to it. Next up, fourth book was Lucy Score's Rock Bottom Girl. I bought this a couple months ago. Um, I adore Lucy Score. I will eventually own all of her books, mark my words. She's just so funny. Love the way she writes, it's so fast paced. Romances don't typically need to be this long, but she makes it work. She makes it work so well. I feel like everything is such a fast read and it's just phenomenal. Real quick, I did buy the Nabla Freckle Marker because my Freck XL was basically gone. Um, I used this yesterday and I actually kind of like it. Undecided if I like it more than Freck or not because I've only just begun using it, but I like it. I like the texture. I feel like it meshes into the skin really nicely, so I'm just going to apply my freckles while I talk about Rock Bottom Girl. This is very much a like second chance romance kind of vibe. Um, she basically did not have the best time of her life when she lived in her hometown going to high school and stuff. So she moved away, had a good job, all that good stuff. Well, all of that starts to flounder. She kind of has no choice but to move back. So she's back in her hometown. She's in her like, I think late thirties is when it takes place. She ends up getting a job being like a soccer coach for her high school. So it's just like super weird her being back like in her hometown, on her home base, doing soccer, which she did growing up, and it wasn't the most pleasant experience for her. Um, she runs into her old high school crush, who also works at the school. He's like a teacher and a like track coach or something like that. And the book is very much just a, a like kind of self-discovery, her figuring out like what she actually wants out of life, because she's so determined to like just have the good paying dream job and the perfect guy and live in like a big city. And it's kind of like, is that really what she wants out of life? Is that just what she's felt pressured to have? Like, what does she actually need in order to feel fulfilled and happy? Um, I loved her teaching the soccer team. I don't always love kids in books, but I feel like these teenagers were super cute. And I liked the progression of just the relationship growing and everyone feeling like they have just a safe space and a good coach to connect with. It was a really cute story. Of course, I loved the romance aspect. I love a rom-com. Um, overall, it was really, really good. Her kind of getting to stand up to past bullies and rekindle things that didn't end up working out in the past. It was a super cute book and I loved it. Um, I gave this a solid four stars. It wasn't like a perfect five star read like some of the knock em out books, uh, but I, I still really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really cute book. Who would have thought that I would have enjoyed a book kind of about soccer, <laughs> but you know, I did. Moving on, um, I'm gonna be using some of my Ensley Rain singles in my eye look today. And I also wanted to use this one, not only in my eye look, but also for my face highlight. It's called Pink Lemonade. I thought this multi-chrome would be quite cute, so let's try it out. Next up, I read Katie Cross's Sisters of Blood and Spirit. This was quite a short read. It was only like 250 pages. Um, my friend Trisha sent that to me, so shout out, Trisha. Thank you so much. Um, this was a fun story. Ooh, that is pigmented. Quite pigmented. Let me get my blush brush. <laughs> Just buff that out just a wee bit. There we go. That's better. That's a little more. Like I wanted to be bold and bright, but it was almost a little too bold and bright. Um, but this was a cool story. It's basically these twin sisters. One of them was born, stillborn. So one of the twin sisters has lived her whole life without her sister, but she can see ghosts and her sister has just always been with her throughout her entire life. So she's always felt like she has her sister right there with her. Her name is Lark. The alive sister is Lark the 
ghost sister is Ren. Um, but everyone thinks that Lark is crazy. She's had a hard time like in school and even with her family. Like I think at this point she lives with her grandma because her parents just basically couldn't handle her anymore, especially because they're grieving the loss of their daughter who died 17 years prior when she was born. And it was just too much. So basically gave her to her grandma. Not great. At this point in the book, she's in high school. I think she's a senior. And basically this group of like, I don't even want to call them friends because it's like loose friends because she doesn't really have friends because she just feels so alone with her ghost sister. Um, but they get into some trouble with some demonic entities and other ghosts that are not quite so friendly. Uh, so basically Lark and Ren need to work together to help solve the problems that are happening, stop whatever being is trying to come after these other kids and just help save the day. It was a cool story. It wasn't like so groundbreaking that I was like beyond obsessed with it, but it was a pretty quick read. It switched perspectives between Ren and Lark. So it was cool getting to know kind of what was happening between each sister's perspective being in the real world and the ghostly world and getting to know the different side characters. And there was a good amount of like mystery involved and just trying to figure out like which ghost is doing the bad things and what was the motive and all the things. So it was interesting. I gave it like a solid three, I'd probably give it like a three, three and a half. Like I wasn't like, Oh my gosh, this is my new favorite book of all time, but I enjoyed it. She also did send me the sequel and I actually um, just pulled it off my shelf last night. So I'm gonna start that today. Um, I'm excited to read the sequel too, because it was good. I just wasn't like beyond obsessed with it. Really quick, I'm gonna spray my face with my Milk Makeup Hydro Grip and we'll move on to the eyes. Moving on to the eyes, I'm gonna be using a combination of the Secret Grove palette from Gourmet Girls with some of my Ensley Rain singles. Um, I haven't gotten to use this palette or really any of the singles yet until I threw them on my face, um, but this is the Secret Grove. It's very cute, very like grungy garden. Um, I wanna play with kind of the burgundy reds today because I have like little pops of it on my mushrooms on my sweater. Um, so I wanna do kind of, this shade is my deepening shade, blended into rustic, and I'll probably use Academia to like kind of really buff everything out in the outer corners. Um, and I think I do wanna use a little bit of this bewitching shade, just kind of like on the outer part of the lid. And then after that, I'll switch into my singles. And I wanna use this one here, I think, Marigold. I think that'll be really cute. And then I'll use like Pink Lemonade again as my inner corner. So kind of like a pinky reddish, vibe. I think that'll be cool. I just wanted to give you the, the breakdown of the plan before I continue talking about more books because we have six more to go. We're about halfway through. <laughs> I'm going to prime with my Sigma eyeshadow base and Persuade and then blend it out and we're moving on. So the next book I read was Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. I was really, really excited to read this thriller. It is so hyped up. It's a lot of people's number one favorite thriller and I haven't read anything from that author yet and I was Really, really excited to dive into it because I do love reading a thriller. I've gotten more into them the last few months. I've been trying like various ones from different authors that I've had recommended to me and there's a lot that I want to continue picking up. So yeah, I was really excited to dive into this one. This is basically like a, a marital problems kind of thriller. We have Adam and Amelia Wright. They are basically on the fritz. Their marriage is not going well. So they take this weekend away to try to rekindle things as per request of their therapist. Um, so they're off on that journey. Things are kind of going crazy. Like they're staying in this weird church. It's all kind of creepy and kind of weird. They aren't really sure why this is the place that they went to. It was like gifted to them. And they're like, who brought us here? This is kind of odd. And then we also get flashbacks to past marriage letters written to Adam where it's like, the first year of marriage, second year of marriage, third year, and just kind of like a recap over that particular year. So we're kind of getting throwbacks on the previous years of marriage and everything's just kind of working out. We start getting slowly introduced to other characters in very like ominous ways. And then of course, at the end, everything all comes together and everything starts to make sense. Um, I will say whenever the twists and stuff started to happen and things started to connect, I felt kind of like, anticlimactic. I was like, it's not like I fully guessed what was going to happen per se, but I was kind of just like, oh, that that's, that's the twist. I guess, I guess that's fine. Like I didn't feel like super blown away by it. And I liked the writing style. I liked the, how it switched perspectives between Adam and Amelia. 
Um, I liked that we got perspectives from another character once you get further into the book. I liked that we had the notes written to basically nobody. It was basically a diary entry, but written in a letter form um, of previous years of marriage. So there were things I really liked about it. I just didn't think the twist was like that crazy. I don't know. It was just like not that surprising to me. So that's kind of kind of where I felt. Um, I ended up giving it like a solid 3.5 stars just because maybe it was just too hyped for me. Maybe it got hyped up too much and then I wasn't blown away, which doesn't happen that often. Like I'm not someone who like, if something's really hyped up, I'm gonna go looking for a thing to dislike about it. Like I want to enjoy it. I want to also understand the hype. Um, but that one just like, I don't know, I just, I didn't feel like it was the best thriller I'd ever read thus far, but it was still good. Don't get me wrong. Like if you're even remotely interested um, by like the premise and stuff like that, like go for it. I thought it was still a fun read. I just didn't think it was worthy of like five stars, like a lot of people give it. So that's where I ended up landing with that one. I'm not like turned off by this author either or anything by any means. Um, I'm still down to potentially read more things. I just didn't think that one quite lived up to the hype that I was expecting in my mind, but it was still a fun read. But next up, we have Things We Left Behind, also by Lucy Score, same author as Rock Bottom Girl. This is the third and final book in the Knock em Out trilogy. I have loved this trilogy so much. It's been one of my favorite reads since getting back into reading back in February. I just love the town of Knock em Out. Uh, Knox and Naomi from the first book, I just loved their story, very grumpy sunshine. Um, I loved the second book, which was very like slow burn with Knox's brother Nash and his love interest, Lena. And now we finally have Lucian and Sloane's story, which has been teased really since the first book. They hate each other's guts and I have wanted to get to know their story so bad. I wanted to know more about their past and what they've been going through. How did they get to this point? Everyone's in their like late thirties in this series. I like when romance books take place with someone who's a little bit older, like it's not just like a spry 20 year old. Like I like it when it's 30 year olds. Um, but I just love the town and knock them out. Lucy score has always done such a good job at building up this town. Like I feel like I can visualize the entire town. I can visualize all the little local businesses that have been mentioned. I know all the side characters so well. She builds up people so just great. Like it's just such a good story, such a good series. I'm so sad that it's over. Um, but I've been so hyped for this book, I pre-ordered it months ago, well before my book buying ban. And I've just been so excited for this one to finally come out and I'm so excited it's here, but I'm also so sad that it's over. So this was very much a kind of like traditional enemies to lovers, almost a little bit of a second chance because they were kind of friends towards the end of high school. We get a little bit of throwback between the then and the now. We get to know a little bit about what was going on back then, what caused them to kind of be in this place of hate that they're in now. I liked that we got to know a bit more about his job and stuff like that, because it's kind of like a cryptic secretive thing in the previous book, so it's nice to get to know a little bit more about what's going on. And then of course we have the present, which is most of the book. It's only little blips of like the past, because there weren't like, it wasn't that big of a time period um, that we have to look back on. But it switches between Lucian and Sloane's stories. We are kind of seeing them like, of course, hating each other in the beginning, interacting more and more, and such as life goes on in a enemies to lovers. Of course, things get rekindled, and it was just so great just letting the story unfold. I loved getting to know more about Lucian's past, even though it's very sad. I liked, like, actually getting to know it and, like, knowing what's going on. Um, I love getting to know Sloane deeper because she's just such a cool character. I think this might have been my favorite of the three. It's tied between this and the first one. And I also loved the second one. Like this was my five star read of the month if you don't count the Jeanette McCurdy one. Cause again, that one's kind of weird to rate but I just felt appropriate to rate it five stars. But this was definitely like my five star read of the month. I just, I love that book. I love this series and I'm so bummed that it's over but I have more Lucy score books to read. So it'll be okay. I'm sure she's already cooking up new stuff. So I will be ready for it when it happens. Moving on to the next book before I start diving into some shimmers. I read The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This was also gifted to me by my friend Trisha. So thank you so much, Trisha, again. Um, this was a fun little story. It was kind of like a dark fairy tale kind of situation. We have our main character, Alice. She basically, 
has grown up living with her mom and things have always been kind of weird. Like bad luck follows them around. They're constantly having to move around. Just weird stuff is constantly happening. Um, she doesn't know much about her extended family. Her mom has always kind of forbid her from like knowing her grandmother or anything like that, who was like a renowned, not renowned, that's a bit of a stretch. She wrote dark fairy tales. She's never gotten to read them though, so she didn't really know what they were about or anything. And she also just knew that she lived in a place called the Hazelwood, which her mom has always said like, we cannot visit there. Like that's just not somewhere we can go. Um, it's not safe, like things like that. So she's never really gotten to know anything. She has a lot of questions about her past. She's 17 at the moment, so she's still in high school and stuff. It was such a pretty shimmer. The sun's starting to come in like crazy, so let me adjust my curtain. Well, her grandmother ends up passing away according to a letter that they receive. And then her mom also ends up missing. She gets a weird, I can't remember if she gets a note or something like that. Basically something indicates that she needs to go to the Hazelwood and save her mom. She ends up connecting with a classmate, Ellery Finch, um, who, <laughs> coincidentally is like a super fan of the grandma and he loves her writing. So they end up working together to help save her mom and figure out the mystery that surrounds everything that's going on. Um, he ends up retelling her a bunch of the stories from the various books, depending on what's relevance and stuff like that. I don't want to give too much away because it was kind of fun just going through the story and letting it unfold, but we have blips of like darker fairy tales kind of come to life and stuff like that. It was an interesting premise. Um, the writing style, maybe it wasn't the writing style. There was just something about the pacing that wasn't my absolute favorite. Like I wasn't like totally obsessed with everything that was happening. Like it took me a little while to connect. I think partly because the main character kind of sucks. Like she's not the most likable main character. Um, so sometimes that makes it a little bit harder, but I still enjoyed it enough. I would give it probably like a solid three, three and a half stars also. Like I enjoyed it, but I'm not like, screaming from the rooftops obsessed with it um there are two other books in this series as well one's a direct sequel which i am going to read in october and one is actually just the book that her grandmother wrote of all the fairy tales so i'm excited to read that one after i finish the second as well um, i love the artwork i love the premise i think it's a good story i just wasn't like the most obsessed with it if that makes sense but i still really enjoyed it and i'm grateful i got to read it because i hadn't heard of it prior to receiving it so i thought it was fun i liked the the darker fairy tale situation. I thought that was cool. I'm liking this eye look. I think that's quite lovely. Um, I'm gonna work on like mascara, eye pencil, lashes while I talk about the last three. Um, next was The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. I was really excited to read this one. One, because I bought Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey a few months ago because it was recommended to me. Um, but then my friend who recommended the book actually, she ended up having a second one of these. So she gave me her extra one. Um, so I was excited just to like read this author. I also liked the fact that it was kind of small. Like sometimes I just want like a quicker read. I don't want something that's like 600 pages. This is supposed to be kind of like a science-y psychological book. I wouldn't go as far as to call it a thriller, um, but there was definitely psychological aspects to it. It honestly kind of felt like I was reading a Black Mirror episode. Basically, Evelyn is a renowned scientist. She is known specifically for her cloning discoveries, so to speak. She's learned how to clone people, basically. Use this bright red one. I think, I think that'll be cute. Um, and then Martine is a replica of herself, which is kind of weird. And then to make matters worse, ends up having an affair with Evelyn's husband. Evelyn's husband leaves Evelyn for Martine, the clone of Evelyn. Um, there's just madness going on. Uh, Martine ends up reaching out to Evelyn. Well, turns out now the husband is dead. Uh, Martine needs help with that situation, especially because she can't really do things on her own. She's a clone. She's not supposed to exist. Um, so there's just craziness happening. Evelyn and Martine have to work together to kind of clean up the mess and figure out what to do next. Um, so it was, it was interesting. I hadn't really read anything quite like it prior. Um, very much a Black Mirror episode, I feel like. I feel like it was very heavy on the science. Like there were some parts that I was like, this is a little too data and information heavy for me to compute. Like I don't really need all the specific things about the sciencey realm going on. Like just give me the the layman's terms. I, I am not a scientist. I don't know if this is accurate. I mean, it's probably not because we don't clone people, but you know what I mean? Like sometimes it was just a little too scholarly. <laughs> I was like, okay, let's move on to like, 
the the action. Um, it was interesting. I wasn't obsessed with it. It wasn't as like fast of a page turner as I was anticipating, especially based on like the little quotes that are all over the book. Like this was so good. There were so many twists and turns. Uh, it was fine. It was interesting enough, but I wasn't like obsessed glued to this. Like I had to know what happened next, um, but I still enjoyed it. I gave it probably... I don't know, again, somewhere between a three, three and a half stars. Like I didn't dislike it by any means, but I just wasn't obsessed with it. But I am still excited to read the other book from her because Just Like Home is supposed to be really good, more on like the horror realm. Uh, so yeah, that was this one. I think it was still an interesting concept. If that sounds even remotely interesting, I think you might as well give it a shot. Um, Cause it was an easy read uh, despite the like heavy science talk, um, but I still enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Next up, The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. This was actually recommended directly from one of you guys. And when I was doing my big book shopping, back in July for my birthday. Um, I just happened to see this on the shelf in Barnes and Noble. I hadn't seen it in person thus far, so I snagged it and I loved it. It was a fun combination of like enemies to lovers romance, but also fantasy because we have like demigods and it's in a different world and there's other things happening, but it's not so far-fetched fantasy that it's like hard to keep up with. You don't have to learn like a whole new political system and like things like that, but it was a cool story. Basically we have Hart and Mercy. <laughs> Hart is a marshal. He deals with um, stopping what they call drudges, which basically infect people and kind of reanimate them and try to cause chaos and ruckus and all the bad things like they're not good to have so he has to eliminate them that's his job as a marshal in doing so of course he sometimes runs into dead people and he has to do something with them so where do you take the dead people you take them to the undertaker and that is where marcy works her family owns um an undertaking business basically and she's kind of like taken over at this point. Like she does a lot of the work because her dad's getting old, her brother's in school, all the things. Um, Hart and Mercy hate each other. Like from day one, they just have this inexplicable rage toward each other. They just cannot stand each other. Um, they basically only interact when a body needs to be dropped off. But then Hart is feeling pretty bad very early into the book, actually. I think it happens in like the first or second chapter. Um, and he just writes a letter to nobody. He just kind of pours his heart out, writes the letter, sends it off. And it ends up getting delivered to Mercy. It's not signed with him, so it's totally anonymous. Um, she has no clue who it is, which honestly reading it, I'm like, how could you not know that this was him? <laughs> I feel like he made it so obvious who he was right from the get go, but she doesn't suspect it's him probably just because she hates him. Like he'd be the last person on her mind, even though he does come to mind, but <laughs> that's besides the point. She ends up deciding to write this anonymous person back and somehow their letters just always make it to each other because they were meant for each other and they're getting to know each other. They're connecting deeply. They are really becoming fond of each other. And then things just progress from there. They end up connecting in real life too, although unknowingly that they are writing for each other. One knows, the other doesn't. And it's just a whole thing. And it was just a fun story. I love an enemies to lovers. I love watching two people that hate each other uh, realize they actually love each other. So this was a really cute book. Again, a really good combination of fantasy meets romance. I thought it was a good time. Um, the lashes I'm gonna put on are Flare from Bright lashes, by the way, just these little half lashes. I gave The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy a solid four stars, maybe 4.25, maybe 4.5. It was pretty good. It was pretty fast paced. So about 450 pages or so. And I found myself just really wanting to continue getting to know more of what happened. Um, it switches perspectives between Heart and Mercy. So you're getting to know the ins and outs of The Undertaking world, but you're also getting to know the ins and outs of the marshalling and the drudges and the battles and stuff like that. Even just him specifically as a demigod, which is cool. Um, so just lots of fun stuff happening. I thought it was a really interesting story. I don't really have anything quite like that in my collection. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed it. If you're someone who maybe loves romance, but you want to delve into fantasy, but you're kind of intimidated, that could be a good one to potentially start with because it's in a fantasy world, but the fantasy isn't the forefront, in my opinion. Um, or maybe also if you like fantasy, but want a little bit of romance in your life, you could, you could do it that way as well. I thought it was a really cute book and I'm happy I got that recommendation. When I do my lashes, I like to put a little bit of the black House of Lashes lash glue on the lash band itself. And then I draw a little bit of the clear one on my lash line next to my lashes so that when everything's tacky, it just adheres really easily. And I literally let it sit like a solid, like two, two and a half minutes or so. It, but we're on the last book finally. I finished this last night. This is TJ Klune's Under the Whispering Door. My friend Jenny gave this to me actually. And um, I'd already read House on the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune 
two months ago or so and I really enjoyed that one so I was excited to get gifted this one and read another story by him. They're two totally like standalone books. They don't have anything to do with each other so you don't have to read one to read the other. Um, although I'm glad I read the other one first for some reason. I think it's just because at one point this references like a house on the cerulean sea and I was like oh cute I've read that. Um, but this one was a fun story. So basically we have Wallace. He's kind of like a gruff, no-nonsense, hardworking. He works at a law firm. All he cares about is work. He has no empathy for anyone but himself, really. He has no relationships. He has no friendships. He has really no life. It's just work, and that's basically it. Well, he ends up uh, dying unexpectedly from a heart attack, and, and now he's dead. He's at his funeral, hanging out, unsure what's going on, uh, very disappointed that nobody's at his funeral, and then he runs into May, who is able to see him. She's his reaper. And she takes him to this magical tea shop where the fairy man, Hugo, resides. And basically, Hugo's job is to help him basically cross over to the other side. And this story was basically just a journey into him discovering that life is so much more than what he was doing and life is worth living and the little things matter but he's discovering that after he's already dead. It was really good. It was a like happy, but also solemn story. Um, at one point you'll get introduced to this character called Cameron. And once you find out his story later, it like broke my heart. Like I was like tearing up. It was really sad. Um, but this was overall a really good book. Like you just feel very, I don't know, good at the end. I liked the way it ended. I felt like it had a good level of emotional, but also it was like cute and uplifting. It was a really good combination of happy and sad. And I really enjoyed it. I would give it a solid like four, maybe four and a half stars as well. Um, I thought it was super, super cute. I don't, I think he has written at least one other book that I haven't read yet. Um, cause I've only read those two. So I'll have to like check that out at some point and, and get into that. Ooh, someone just rang our doorbell. Who is here? Is it our other chair? We're getting furniture delivered and they all except one chair got delivered yesterday. So maybe that's what that is. Um, but yeah, this was a good reading month. I feel like I read some great things. I read some mid things as well, but even the things that were like in the three, three and a half star, like I didn't dislike them. They were just like not mind blowing, you know, like especially when I'm reading lots of things at a time, like I really have to kind of compare things to each other really just based on how I feel at the end. Like if I'm feeling like super satisfied and happy, it's probably gonna be like a four, four and a half star. If I'm left feeling kind of like, okay, yeah, I mean, that was a book, it was enjoyable. It's, it's gonna be in like the three, three and a half star. If I'm feeling bored, <laughs> it's gonna be in the twos. And I haven't rated anything a one because if it's that bad, I'm probably DNFing it. I've had to DNF, I think, three books so far this year. Um, how many books have I read so far this year? I have read 86 books this year, 83 if you don't count my three DNF books. Um, I made it like 30% of the way for all those books though, so I, I kind of count them because I, I put in some effort. And one of them I tried to read twice because I didn't want to DNF it. Um, but yeah, I'm at 86 books so far this year, and that's starting back in February, so I'm doing pretty darn good. And I love this look. Um, I'm just gonna finish it off now though. I'm going to just throw on a lip and then we will finish up this video. Thanks so much for watching my video. For my lip, I ended up going with uh, Desert Mauve Pencil with the Odin's Eye Angelica Spectral Gloss over top. Um, I love this look. I feel like this palette played really nicely. I love Gourmet Girls formulas. That shimmer and these mattes are so pretty. And these multi-chromes from Ensley Rain are just gorgeous. Super excited about how this came out. Um, I would love to, again, just hear your thoughts on all the books that I talked about today. Did you love any of them? Did you hate any of them? What are you reading right now? I would love to know what you're currently reading. Um, like I mentioned before, I'm about to start the sequel to that uh, Sisters Ghost Blood book. I don't remember the name of it. I think the sequel is called The Sisters of Salt and Iron. Um, but I'm excited to dive into that one. I think it like takes place around Halloween, so perfect for this time of year. If you made it to the end of this video, leave some book-related emojis. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out a lot. And if you're not already, you can go follow me over on Instagram. I'm Batty Bean over there as well. And also feel free to subscribe if you haven't. I'm posting every single day in the month of October. Also feel free to join my channel memberships. You'll get fun little perks, including a members only get ready with me once a month, which which does mean at some point this month, there will be two videos for you in the same day if you're a member. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.